Uh, now we're going to look at quadratic functions and the discriminant, which is one of the topics suggested for revision. So it's one of the ones that people have found a bit more difficult. Um, so the discriminant, if we look at the quadratic formula, the discriminant is the bit that's underneath the square root. So if we have uh, a quadratic function, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, then this is a quadratic formula where the, um, the coefficients of x squared is a, coefficient of x is b, and the coefficient of x is c. So as an example, if we had, uh, we had x squared plus 5x plus 4, and I'm going to say y equals, we're going to draw a graph of this, then we could say that the, the value of a in this case is equal to 1, the value of b is equal to 5, and the value of c is equal to 4. And if we were to sketch this function, uh, then what we might want to do is factorise it, or you can put this into your calculator and try and find the result, the roots, by solving it and putting it equal to zero. So if we do that, make that equal zero, and then if I factorise that, then what I would get is I'd get x plus four, x plus one, and that would tell me that the roots were x equals minus 4 and x is equal to minus 1. And by the roots, what that means is, if I was to sketch it, it means the values that would make this function equal 0. So we've got minus 4 and minus 1. And if I was to sketch this, it would look like this. So it crosses the horizontal axis at the points which are its roots. And if we look at the discriminant for this one, so if we look at b squared minus 4ac, which is the discriminant, then if we substitute the values in, we get that B is 5, so we've got 5 squared and uh, minus 4 times 1 times 4 for the C. So we get 25 minus 16, which is 9, and that's obviously greater than 0. So for that, if we look at this, this table here, we'd see that if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, then we do get two real roots. And if we compare that with the graph, we can see we did indeed get two real roots when we sketched it. We got two points where it crossed the horizontal axis. If we look at another function now, so I'm going to look at one which has got two equal roots. I'm going to try and look at this case now. So two equal roots. So this is a, an equation that I worked out earlier, so I knew it would work. So if I add y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4, if I was to factorise that, then I would get that that's equal to two brackets, which are the same, x plus 2 and x plus 2. And to find the roots, I could equate that to 0. I get x is equal to minus 2. And again, from the second bracket, x equals minus 2. And what that tells me is, if I was to sketch that, then... In fact, both roots are the same place, so it doesn't actually cross the x-axis. It just goes like that. So that's one, uh, one root or two equal roots, uh, minus two. And 
if we put that into our discriminant b squared minus 4ac we can see that what we get is b is 4 so 4 squared minus 4 times 1 and then c is 4 so i get is 16 minus 16 which equals 0 and so since it's equal to 0 we've got two equal roots or and this is just saying or an alternative way of saying that same thing two repeated roots so two equal roots and a consequence of this is that the the graph if we were to sketch it is only actually going to touch the horizontal axis it's not going to cross it at all if we now look at one where there's no real roots then we've um, there's one that i've made previously and this one is if we had y equals x squared plus 2x plus 5. So if we tried to put that into two brackets, we actually find we couldn't do it. And if you try and uh, equate that into a zero, um, you'll find that there's no solution. So if you put that into your calculator and uh, try and find, try and equate it to zero, you'll find it doesn't actually equal zero for any real values of x. Um, so if we wanted to sketch it, we might want to try using the completing the square method. So we would get that x, we get this would be written in completing the square method as x plus 1 squared and then plus 4. Obviously look into that a bit more if you're unsure of how to do the completing the square method. But this is an alternative way of writing this function. So x squared, x plus 1, all squared, plus 4. And that's very useful for allowing us to sketch the function because if we were to sketch that, this is a transformation. So uh, of it's a transformation of y equals x squared. So we know the shape of y equals x squared. We know that y equals x squared would look like this. And this is a transformation where it's been moved up by four. So this minimum point here has been moved up by four and it's been moved to the left by minus whatever is been added to x in the bracket. So it's been moved by minus one uh, to the left horizontally. So that means this new graph would look like this. So this is x squared, but transformed by, in fact, the vector minus one, four from these two values. And we can see it doesn't cross the axis at all. So that means there's no real roots because it's not crossing this horizontal x-axis. And if we try and um, see what would the discriminant say in this case, b squared minus 4ac, well, we can see that b is 2. So we've got 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times Five, which is 4 minus 20 which is minus 16 which is obviously less than zero so no real roots I'm just going to explain that a little bit further but we, we, we saw that it didn't cross the horizontal axis there so it was a translation of the graph y equals x squared so it was looking like this now if we look at trying to find the solutions using the quadratic formula so the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a so if we were to shove all these values in there, then we've got b is 2, so minus 2 
plus or minus square root of 2 squared. So my, this is the discriminant part, minus 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2 times 1, because A is 1 there. So that would be minus 2, plus or minus. And we already worked out the value of 2 squared minus all that bit. So that's minus 16. And that's all over 2. And we can see we've got the square root of a negative number in here. Well, obviously, a neg if we try and root a negative number, we get an error on the calculator. So that's because there's no real root to a negative number. And that's why the, um, the quadratic formula can't find any solutions to a graph which doesn't cross the x-axis because it has no, no real roots.